All right, we've got another Gibson up for review today. This is my 1978 Gibson Grabber. The Grabber is my favorite of the G series. There was the G3 with the three single coil pickups, the Ripper, and the Grabber. The Grabber features the sliding pickup, does virtually nothing for tone. Very, very minor, minor change in tone when you uh, slide the pickup back and forth. Uh, the tone control is much more effective on this bass. Um, being a big Kiss fan, I always liked the Grabber. I was never really, I had a G3 years ago and it, what, I wanted an EV3 and I got sold a G3. So it never really, it never really went over with me. But the fascinating thing about this series is how Gibson did a complete about face from everything they've ever done bass wise. There was no mahogany. They went to bolt on necks, full scale, very Fender like bases and construction and design. Um, they call them big bottom girls because the bodies are so big. Early ones had alder bodies. This is a later one with maple. The alder bodies dented like crazy. The finish was soft, the lacquer was thin, and the wood was soft. They just dented like mad. The maple bodies hold up much better. Um, it is heavier though because this, this body is a big piece of wood. But this base was a big departure for Gibson, just in construction alone. They completely caved to Fender's dominance. Maple fingerboards, maple necks, maple bodies, alder bodies. This is all Fender territory. Um, Gene Simmons of Kiss is known for using the Ripper. Um, and I was a big Kiss fan back in the day. I saw him in 75, 77, um, really big fan. Um, so it's kind of cool to have a bass very similar to the one Gene played. Now we'll play a little kiss, yeah, right? Hit it! That almost sounds like a precision to me. It's a little gutsier. These are real rock basses, man. You put these through an amp and turn them up and they really, they've got a big ballsy raw sound to them. Um, I just really, uh, I really dig it. I dig the pearl inlays, real mother of pearl dot inlay in there. You can't, there's not a lot of contrast with the maple fingerboard, but they're real lively, very nice pieces. I like it a lot, very subtle. The necks also featured uh, another change for Gibson because of, uh, they're renowned for headstock breaks because of the mahogany and the short grain up here. You know, you just look at them sideways and they snap. So Gibson went, to a scarf joint on the neck. There you can see it right there. And that really was a much better design, a much stronger construction. Um, and that was a really wise move on Gibson's part. Um, even though the necks are maple, because they like the pitched headstock uh, for, for greater string uh, tension, they really needed to do that. And that's a very sensible move. It's very strong. And uh, it was it was a good this really good design feature of these bases. Now I'm going to roll the tone back a little, and we'll play a little more with it. Uh, there we go. A little scratchy. I haven't had this out in a while. Just uh, a really iconic bass, very simple, just one volume, one tone. Um, the bridge was a little archaic. They had a cover for it, um, but covers get in the way for me, so I took it off. If uh, this weren't a vintage bass, I would be cutting those uh, Allen screws down right away, but I'm not going to. Well, they're not Allen screws, but the, the, the saddle screws would be cutting those down. But we're going to leave it as is for now because it is vintage. Um, this bass is in really nice condition. It never got played a whole lot. A few marks on the back, but just nice and shiny still. Lacquer still nice and clean. The uh, sliding pickup still works for what it does. Here, here's... It's 
really cool. I mean, they must have been smoking a lot of pot when they were thinking about this. That's all I got to say. But anyhow, here it is. 1978 Gibson Ripper. Rock and roll all night. Party every day.